a little tine on this side with another little tine on that side. A metal part that, you know, you end up sticking together. Do you know how a zipper works? My handwriting is amazing. And that's it. Let's do this thing. Let's do, let's do, let's do this thing. Let's do, let's do, let's do this thing. Do this thing. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to your Monday Math Minute. I am so excited today to be talking with you about a function. What on earth is a function? A function is an awesome mathematical object like a zipper. It connects one group of elements with another group of elements or one list of numbers with another list of numbers but it connects them in a special way and it lets us do cool things so here is what you might use a function for imagine I asked you which set is larger and I wrote down all right we've got set a here which is going to be the elements one three and five and then I'm going to make up set B, which will be the elements 10, 11, and 12. If we were going to answer which set is larger, one thing we might do is count up the number of elements and then compare them, right? So set A has three elements there. Set B also three elements. And so in this case, we would say, ah, set A and set B are the same size. What if instead I said, okay, so you've got set A, which is elements 1, 3, and 5, and set B, which is elements 10 and 11. In that case, you might again count them up and say, well, set A still has three elements. Set B now only has two elements. We could say in some sense, set A is larger than set B because it has more elements. Three elements is a larger number of elements, than two elements is. And if we can just count up the number of elements pretty quickly, then that's no problem. We would typically just compare it that way. But what if my elements were actually these two sets? Now all of a sudden, I'm not quite so sure how it is that I'm supposed to compare these. Or that's not really true. I'm sure how I'm supposed to compare them. I guess I'm supposed to count up how many elements are in set A and count up how many elements are in set B and then compare those numbers just like we did before. But clearly this is not going to be an exciting task for me to undertake. I don't want to sit here and count. What if I end up miscounting? And so what I need is a better way to count the items in these sets. One way to do that is with a function. Now I said a few minutes ago, a function you can think of like a zipper. It's just going to connect a little tine on this side with another little tine on that side. Surely the word is tine, that, that little metal part that you know and you end up sticking together. Do you know how a zipper works? Anyway, so we connect these little tines, and one thing that we can tell when we connect all the little tines together is that they must be an equal number of tines on each side. Or literally, in this case, if I wasn't sure whether or not the number of fingers and thumbs digits on my right hand was the same as the number of fingers and thumbs on my left hand, I could end up just lining them up and I could see, oh yeah, they have to be the same because they all match up. We can do the same thing here. If we go ahead and put set A and set B into two different lists, we can see, oh, so it ends up being the case that set B has one fewer element in it than set A does. And so again, we could end up saying set A is larger than set B. Not only does a function help us accomplish this with sets of finite amount, that is there is a limited number of items in set A and set B, it also lets us figure this out for sets that don't have finite numbers of elements. What am I talking about? Well, what are the let's say that set A, instead of being some number like 10, 11, 12, and so on, I just said was the integers. So that is, I'm going to have 1, 2, on and on forever. Or if you just want to keep things, uh, let's stick with that. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, and of course, 0, negative 1 goes back the other way as well. The integers are all the whole numbers, positive and negative and 0. And then set B, I want to compare that to all the even numbers. The even numbers, you'll remember, are those that are divisible by two. And so that would be things like negative four, negative two, 
zero, two, four, etc. I want you to take a second and think to yourself, which of these two sets has more numbers in it? Now in a sense, there really shouldn't be an answer to that question. Both of these sets are endless. You can't count how many integers there are. You can't count how many even numbers there are. Or at least when I say you can't count them, I mean that you can't tell me, oh, there are a million even integers and that's it. Like once we get to a million, like let's say the last one was two million and two, we could just say, well, wait, wouldn't the next one just be two million and four? So we can always keep going. And so in one sense you would say, well, neither of these sets is countable. And so it's not gonna be the case that we can say one of them is bigger than the other. And that's okay, but that's not super satisfying. Others of you might be thinking, well, wait, obviously the first set has more because the first set has all the same numbers as the second set. Like I can see the even integer two in both sets. I can see four in both sets. I can see zero in both sets. And clearly we didn't write it down, but we would have also had things like negative two and so on. But then the integers also have all the odd numbers, right? We've got negative one, one, three, five, seven. And so shouldn't it clearly be the case that set A is larger because it has all of those uh, odd numbers as well as all the same even numbers that are in set B? There are, you know, different ways we could end up deciding the answer to this question, but one of them is by using a function. If we can relate the tines of one of these sets to the tines of the other, then we will know they all match up even if we can't actually count them. So even if I had like 17 hands going up and down here, as long as we could keep linking up all of our th fingers and thumbs, we could say that these sets are the same size. So the question then becomes, can we do that with the integers and the even numbers? And the answer is definitely yes. So imagine we've got set A here on the left and set B on the right. Set A, again, the integers are gonna be things like negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. Whereas set B, I'm gonna go with negative six, negative four, negative two, zero. Remember, these are the even integers, two, four, six, eight, and so on. Now, I've actually linked these up in a particular way. Hopefully, you can easily see the relationship. How is it that these tines are matching up in this particular case? How am I getting from negative three to negative six, or negative one to negative two? or one to two, two to four, three to six, what's going on there? You can see, oh, the elements of set B are always twice as much as the element in set A. So there's a specific relationship going on here. It's not super important that we are able to figure out what that relationship is, but again, in this case, we can. And that's why we can say, oh, all these times match up. And so how large is set A compared to how large is set B? these sets must be the same size. Even though they're both infinitely large, that is there's no end to the integers and there's no end to the even numbers, we can say they're the same size. That's crazy. How can we say things that are infinitely large are the same size? This awesome mathematical object called a function is what ends up letting us do that. There are, you might think, oh, well, does that mean that like any two sets are the same size. Uh, I'm gonna give some problems to you to decide and then you can comment down below and tell me what you think. Could we show that the evens and the odds are the same size? Could we show that the integers and the tenths are the same size? So by the tenths, I mean one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, and so on. In fact, that's kind of a smaller version of this question. Could we show that the integers and all rational numbers, so not just the tenths, one tenths, two tenths, three tenths, and so on, but any fraction we could think of, one third, two thirds, uh, four fifths, five, yeah, I guess five fifths, six fifths, seven fifths, uh, any rationals, could we show that the integers and all those different rational fractions I just listed out, all those ratios, are those the same size? And then finally, we might move on to, could we show that the rationals and the irrationals are the same size? So the rationals, again, all the fractions, all the ratios, but the irrationals are all those weird numbers like pi or the square root of two, that when you express them as decimals, they never end and they never repeat. And so they cannot be expressed as the ratio between two integers. Using a function 
we can figure out the answers to these four particular questions. And that's what I want you to try to do. Can you show me which of these sets are the same size and which of them are not? even though, of course, all of them are, in some sense, infinitely large. So that's your Math Minute for today. I hope that was helpful to you. I hope you have a little bit better sense of what a function is. Again, it's like a zipper that connects two different sets of numbers. We actually didn't get into the special way that functions connect numbers, so maybe we'll have to do that in our next Math Minute. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe if the video was helpful. Comment down below with any questions that you have or with your answers to these questions, and I will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.